Hello students, welcome to Zoology class. In this video, let us know about breeding selected traits. So breeding selected traits is nothing but uh, selective breeding. So usually we can call it as artificial selection. So we know about natural selection. In natural selection, the organisms are uh, subjected to several types of tests by the nature. And those organisms which have the qualities uh, to sustain in the test conducted by the nature will survive. Remaining organisms, they will die. So the surviving organisms are nothing but they are selected by the nature. So they are naturally selected. But uh, in case of uh, human beings, we select the organisms that we grow, uh, be it animal or a plant. We select the animal depending on our needs, so depending on our desires. So, so the selection here is made by the human beings that is called artificial selection. So here in this breeding, in case of uh, uh, artificial breeding or selective breeding, we will breed the organisms or uh, we will breed the organisms based on some desirable characters. So selectively, we will conduct these breeding procedures. So that's why it is called as selective breeding. So here in the selective breeding, we will breed some selected characters only, but all characters are not taken into account. All characters are not allowed to enter into the breeds. So only selected characters will be allowed to continue in the breed. So that is the purpose of selective breeding. So this is also called as artificial selection. And this process of selective breeding or artificial selection, it is a age old practice. Uh, since the agriculture began uh, from then only the artificial selection also began. So uh, human beings have developed several types of dog breeds, horses, flower types, and most modern food also, uh, the modern food crops are also being uh, uh, bred by uh, the artificial selection methods uh, since ages. So many more modern organisms are also uh, being derived from this artificial selection or uh, selective breeding procedures. So selective breeding, uh, uh, the uh, History of selective breeding in case of animals uh, goes back to uh, prehistoric ages, uh, but in 1880s, uh, we can know that uh, in 1880s, hunters, uh, 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 they were uh, in a need of a hunting dog. So the hunting dog should be a big one, strong one, and should be very fast in uh, movements, and it should be aggressive also. So however, they did not find any such dog uh, at that time. So they knew that two species of dogs were there. So each of these two species were having some of the desirable characters. So they wanted to have all those desirable characters into one dog or into one species. So they have conducted some selective breeding exp experiments. So with these uh, selective breeding experiments, uh, we have got uh, this uh, uh, organism. So coming to mastiff, this mastiff is a big one. And it is a strong one, but it is not having a uh, aggression character and uh, it is not uh, having the speed also in movements. Uh, whereas this American bulldog, uh, it is fast and aggressive, but it is very small in size. So uh, this American bulldog is having one uh, uh, desirable character and Mastiff is having another desirable character. So they wanted to have these uh, two different desirable characters present in two different uh, species uh, into one. <clears throat> so by uh, uh, hybridizing or by breeding these two mastiff and American uh, uh, bulldogs, they have created bull mastiff. And these bull mastiffs are having both the positive characters or required characters from these two different individual dogs into one dog that is bull mastiff. So, Likewise, uh, like Mastiff, this Bull Mastiff is uh, big and strong. And like American uh, Bulldog, it is uh, fast and aggressive. So the purpose of the hunters of uh, 18th century was served by this artificial all-selective breeding procedures. 
So why we use selective breeding? So we use the selective breeding procedures to take advantage of the naturally occurring uh, genetic variation. So in nature, a lot of genetic variations are there. Each individual species is having one type of genetic variation. But we want to take advantage of, of uh, all different types of genetic variations. We want to have them in a single species. So for that purpose, uh, we want to have best characters in a single species only. So for that purpose, uh, we will conduct selective breeding procedure so that we can transfer the wanted characters into the next generation of organisms. So that is the purpose of this selective breeding. So ultimately the purpose of selective breeding is to get better results or to get better food or to get better products uh, from these organisms. So Luther Burbank is a scientist. Uh, uh, he has conducted several of these selective breeding experiments in uh, wild mustard plants. So by these uh, uh, experiments conducted in these wild mustard plants, he has created 800 uh, of varieties in these wild mustard plants. So uh, then uh, uh, this uh, Luther Balbanka, uh, when he bred uh, uh, for stem, stem characters, he has developed uh, color beans. Uh, and uh, for leaves only, when he uh, intended to develop a species having a good quality leaves, then he developed this kale uh, type of uh, variety. And uh, the selective breeding uh, kept in mind of these uh, lateral birds character resulted in the, the development of uh, Brussels sprouts and uh, terminal bird uh, experiments resulted in the development of cabbage variety and flower clusters developed in the development of cauliflower likewise. Flower sign stems uh, uh, experiments resulted in the development of broccoli species. So likewise, uh, from a single wild plant, uh, uh, these uh, selective breeding, uh, uh, different selective breeding experiments conducted by Luther Burbank resulted in the development of 800 uh, different varieties of plants. So. Uh, one another type of experiment uh, that results in the uh, selective breeding or uh, uh, developing uh, required qualities in the plants is polyploidy. So polyploidy in plants and especially in fruits, uh, in fruits also, uh, it can uh, give a lot of uh, results. So polyploid plants uh, uh, with an e uneven number of sets of chromosomes are sterile, but polyploids with uh, even number of uh, chromosome sets are they are not uh, uh, sterile they are fertile and uh, they can survive and they can continue as a new species uh, in most cases these polyploids uh, of uh, even number of chromosome sets uh, they are very big in size and uh, usually they will be seedless so uh, with this polyploidy experiments, seedless bananas were, uh, were developed and uh, many seedless fruits are also were developed by this polyploidy experiment. So polyploidy is also one type of selective breeding method in case of plants. So and uh, this Luther Burbank, uh, uh, he has, uh, we have seen in the previous slide, he has developed uh, 800 uh, varieties of them we have seen some uh, in case of wild mustard plant. Uh, this fellow also developed a variety of uh, new Irish potato. Uh, this Ireland people, they usually, they mostly depend on potatoes for, to meet their food needs. So during the great uh, famine uh, uh, time that occurred in uh, England and uh, Ireland uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, during this uh, 1845 to 1851 uh, 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 times. So the potato blight disease was very prevalent during that time and that resulted in the heavy losses to this potato production. So that resulted in the millions of people's death uh, during this uh, six years of time. So to, uh, 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 to identify a solution to this problem, to this uh, problem of this water, uh, potato blight. He has conducted experiments and he successfully developed a new potato variety that will not get blight disease. Uh, and uh, this potato later it was sent uh, to the Ireland and it saved the uh, people of Ireland. So uh, like this uh, potato also was developed by this Luther Burbanka. 
so there are uh, two types of uh, selected breeding uh, selective breeding methods one is hybridization another one is inbreeding so in hybridization we will breed two different uh, individuals or uh, two different plants or two different animals they are not of same species so two different or uh, individuals belonging to two different species are bred in this hybridization and usually this hybridization results in the uh, best results and uh, these hybrids they will uh, consist of the both uh, uh, of their parents good qualities so this luther barbant as we have already seen uh, he has developed 800 plants uh, because of this hybridization experiments only so these many varieties uh, again we can see them in uh, our supermarkets and uh, mostly we are using them on a daily basis yeah. so he had uh, bred for different types of sizes uh, disease resistance flowering uh, and uh, taste color and variety of other uh, uh, items or uh, other traits are also were uh, bred uh, and uh, he has developed uh, in these uh, 800 different uh, varieties in plants another experimental another type of selective breeding uh, is <coughs> inbreeding so in this inbreeding the organisms uh, that are uh, uh, crossed with each other not only they belong to the same species but they are closely related so they are uh, their bloodline is very very close so they will have similar characters and uh, they will have similar uh, gene line or uh, they will they are genetically they are very very close to each other so the inbreeding is then usually to maintain the uh, traits of that particular breed so to maintain the pure breed condition inbreeding will be done so if a breed uh, is uh, bred with another uh, uh, organism the dilution of the characters will take place so to prevent the dilution if uh, one individual animal is having best qualities if we uh, uh, cross fertilize it with another animal the best qualities may be diluted so to prevent the dilution of best qualities uh, the best animals are always uh, allowed to inbreeding only so but uh, this inbreeding is uh, risky in some instances why because mostly in this inbreeding uh, procedures the offspring uh, they may be getting uh, some genetically diseases so uh, usually most genetical diseases are uh, of recessive in nature so due to the inbreeding the homozygous recessive organisms uh, are very common in inbreeding experiments so this homozygous recessive individuals they will exhibit this uh, genetical problems in them so mutations are also may arise uh, and uh, these mutations are also may give these uh, homozygous recessive individuals to have a dangerous situations or dangerous diseases so it is uh, risky if the breed is having uh, some dangerous mutations in them or uh, if the breed is having uh, some dangerous recessive genes in them otherwise inbreeding is uh, uh, not bad so in this inbreeding uh, 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 the best of the best qualities uh, will be maintained in the similar organisms and usually dogs are uh, maintained by inbreeding uh, experiments only and this inbreeding uh, characteristics are unique to each breed uh, are preserved with this inbreeding experiment and uh, this inbreeding is very prevalent in cattle farming also so some cattle say for example in case of uh, this cattle we know that uh, wongolu bulls are very very famous so if uh, wongolu bulls are allowed to breed with other animals uh, the qualities will be diluted so that wongol bulls uh, uh, are allowed to inbreed so in this way the best qualities will be maintained and also it, uh, as i have already told uh, it could be very dangerous if the individuals participating in inbreeding uh, if they are having a uh, dangerous mutations or dangerous uh, recessive genes in them and another uh, method is hybridization so hybridization is very common in uh, plants but uh, not in animals so creating hybrid plants is easy but uh, creating hybrid animals is not uh, easy in many cases so animals can be sterile if their chromosome number is odd so if the 
uh, uh, two different individuals or two different animals, if their chromosome numbers are not same, if their chromosome sets are not same, then they uh, can result in the sterile animal or uh, sterile offspring. So, and uh, there could be many mutations also. These mutations are also uh, may become a obstacle or may become a problem in the offspring. And uh, these mutations are also occur in this hybridization experiments, but they are very rare in uh, wild, uh, uh, wild animals, but we can see a most common in hybrid or uh, hybrid animals. So plant uh, breeding is very, very uh, easy uh, and it will be done by the gardeners and botanists also. So many crops of uh, today are hybrid plants only and uh, sometimes uh, they occur naturally in the wild uh, but mostly we are using hybrid plants now. So these hybrid plants characters uh, are like this. Uh, they are uh, having a high resistance to diseases. They give high yield, high yielding. So yielding capacity is high and the productivity is also high and uh, life longness is also will be the examples for some of the hybrid plants are brinjal, ladies finger, chili, paddy, tomato, etc. And uh, genetically engineered hybrid plants. So these genetically engineered plants, examples, uh, some seedless uh, grapes and seedless watermelons, bananas, uh, these bananas usually they are uh, produced by polyploidy experiments and uh, the polyploidy resulted in the stronger and bigger size of these bananas and corn plants. Uh, these most uh, modern corn plants are uh, selectively bred from uh, a wild grass called uh, teosinte at least uh, 6000 years ago. Uh, and another example for this genetically modified uh, uh, plants uh, is pine berries. So these pine berries here in this lower picture, we can see that uh, they are very small in size. Uh, the uh, small strawberry size animals, they are developed due to the uh, fusion of these uh, genes of uh, pineapple in these strawberries. So to taste, uh, they will look like uh, pineapple. So they taste like pineapple, but the uh, uh, appearance and genetic makeup uh, remains as a strawberry only. So strawberry into the strawberry genome, few genes of these uh, pineapple were incorporated by this RDNA technology that resulted in this uh, new variety called as pine berry. And uh, uh, horse and donkey also, we know this example, uh, the uh, hybridization of horse and donkey results in the mule. So due to the chromosome numbers uh, defect, uh, the mule is uh, sterile, it is not fertile. And uh, breeding in between tiger and lion also resulted in the, a, a hybrid animal called liger. And sheep and goat uh, breeding also resulted in uh, jeep uh, and horse and zebra resulted in a uh, sterile animal called jaws. And uh, increasing variations are also can be seen with these uh, selective breeding methods. So if the desirable character is not present uh, in the naturally or wild animals or wild plants, scientists uh, can induce mutations uh, in those wild plants uh, in hope of uh, seeing that uh, desirable effect in the plants. So, so some experiments resulted in uh, success stories. So examples, oil eating bacteria was developed uh, by this type of experiments and these oil eating bacteria, they help us in cleaning the oil spills in the sea waters. And the polyploidy also, uh, like in banana and say some many citrus fruits result in larger and stronger fruits in these bananas and citrus plants. And the uh, benefits of this artificial selection or uh, selective breeding is that uh, these procedures or these techniques uh, enhance the quality of uh, the products. They can be used in any industry and they can increase the profitability to the grower. And uh, they will allow the needed trades to be produced quickly and uh, effectively. And the drawbacks are also there, several drawbacks uh, uh, in this artificial selection or selective breeding. Uh, they include uh, uh, 
this selective breeding can decrease genetic variation in a gene pool and uh, this uh, uh, in this case uh, some ideal traits are uh, subjective uh, so the ideal characters are not safe for all in for some people one character is ideal or desirable for some other people that is not ideal or desirable so these are subjective they are not objective and uh, quality of life also can be reduced the gene pool of uh, uh, as the gene pool shrinks uh, by this artificial selection so quality of the life of the individual uh, produced by this uh, artificial selection method also can be reduced and uh, there can be an unanticipated consequences also due to this artificial selection procedures these are the several disadvantage disadvantages of uh, selective breeding or artificial <coughs> selection <coughs> so this this topic is over let us meet uh, with another topic in next lesson